Angiotensin Converting Enzyme Inhibitors by Seamus, Jessica, Charles, and Kaylee. Angiotensin Converting Enzyme Inhibitors, or ACE inhibitors, are a pharmaceutical drug. They inhibit the angiotensin converting enzyme and lower blood pressure by relaxing blood vessels. You may have seen them prescribed as perindopril, captopril, enalapril, lisinopril, fosinopril, and ramipril. They specifically target hypertension or high blood pressure. However, it is also used for certain renal or kidney complications and to treat symptoms of diabetes. Cardiovascular diseases, or CVDs, are disorders of the heart and blood vessels. The disease occurs when the heart must work harder than it should to pump blood throughout the body. Symptoms of the disease include hypertension, heart attacks, cerebral vascular disease, and heart failure. The heart works harder due to a blockage in blood vessels, usually from a buildup of a substance known as plaque. Plaque builds up on the walls of the arteries and narrows the passage for blood. This buildup causes hypertension. Blood clots can also form due to the narrow passage. Further complications arise when a blood clot completely blocks blood flow to the heart, provoking a heart attack. A stroke or cerebral vascular disease occurs if a blood clot blocks a vessel to the brain instead or if a blood vessel within the brain bursts from uncontrollable hypertension. Heart failure is a result of the heart not pumping blood as well as it should. The heart is still functioning where the body is not receiving enough blood or oxygen. Besides cardiovascular diseases, ACE inhibitors can treat renal complications. Those with kidney function complications from diabetes can use ACE inhibitors as a form of protection, especially when there is a protein presence in urine. As a therapeutic function, consistent use of the drug is recommended for those with a weakened heart. Diabetic patients utilize the drug to prevent future heart attack. Persistent use of the drug can delay the onset of cardiovascular disease symptoms, prevent death, and lessen the frequency of hospitalization. Depicted as the top 10 causes of death according to the World Health Organization. Three of the causes are cardiovascular, two of which, stroke and ischemic heart disease, generate the highest percentage of deaths, 12 and 13%. In fact, cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death globally. More people die annually from cardiovascular causes than any other cause. In 2012, an estimated 17.5 million people died, which is 31% of global deaths. 7.4 million were due to coronary heart disease and 6.7 million were due to stroke. Over three quarters of the deaths took place in low and middle income countries. The World Health Organization lists tobacco use, unhealthy diet, and obesity physical inactivity, and harmful use of alcohol as behavioral risk factors for the onset of cardiovascular disease. Addressing these risk factors is the first step in preventing cardiovascular disease. People with a disease or who are at high risk for death need early detection, management, counseling, and medicine. High-risk patients are those with hypertension, diabetes, or hyperlipidemia. Numerous drugs focus on treating hypertension in order to reduce CVD risk. Hypertension, otherwise known as high blood pressure, occurs when the systolic blood pressure is greater than 140 millimeters of mercury, or when the diastolic blood pressure is greater than 90 millimeters of mercury. High blood pressure arises in more than one in five adults worldwide. From the graph, we see that approximately a quarter of the world population experiences hypertension. High blood pressure is the root of half of all deaths from strokes and heart disease. Complications from hypertension lead to 9.4 million deaths worldwide every year. In high-income countries, there has been a significant drop of people with hypertension. The drop is due to diagnosis and treatment with low-cost medicines. In contrast, low-income countries have the highest prevalence of raised blood pressure, as seen in the graph of the Southeast Asian and African regions. Many people in these countries are not aware of the disease and do not have access to treatment. Hypertension can be said to be the root of numerous causes and complications involving the heart. There are a number of secondary prevention methods to treat CVDs, especially for patients who already have an established disease like diabetes. Treatments involve aspirin, beta blockers, statins, and ACE inhibitors. We will focus on ACE inhibitors which specifically target hypertension in order to treat cardiovascular diseases, and renal and diabetic complications. Thus, ACE inhibitors are recommended for those who have experienced heart failure, coronary artery disease, adult onset diabetes, or have a diabetic tendency, high blood pressure, or mild kidney disease. To understand how angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors work, we must now talk about the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. 
Here is a diagram that depicts the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. The system pathway begins as the liver releases angiotensinogen into the blood. The kidney then responds by releasing the enzyme renin into the blood to break down angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin is a 10 amino acid oligomer that is then transported throughout the bloodstream into the veins of the lung where it is broken down by angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE to the 8 amino acid octamer angiotensin. Angiotensin 2 is a vasoconstrictive hormone that causes vasoconstriction within the blood vessels of the body, as seen on the right of the screen. Angiotensin 2 causes the release of aldosterone from the adrenal gland, which then binds to the mineral corticoid receptor. The binding causes a reabsorption of sodium and water, as seen on the left side of the diagram. This reabsorption and the vasoconstriction are what cause hypertension. Many different drugs have been identified other than ACE inhibitors for the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system such as beta blockers, which inhibit the kidney's ability to release renin into the blood. There are also renin inhibitors, which inhibit renin's ability to break down angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. AT1 receptor agonists block the active site of AT1 receptors, inhibiting angiotensin 2 binding. MR agonists also known as mineralocorticoid receptor agonists, block the active site of mineralocorticoid receptors, preventing aldosterone binding. Another drug, amylaride triamterine, blocks the epithelial sodium channel, which decreases sodium reabsorption. However, in this talk, we are focusing only on ACE inhibitors. Now we will focus on just how angiotensin 1 is being converted to angiotensin 2 by the angiotensin converting enzyme. This is an important step in the system to block because angiotensin, as stated, is a vasoconstrictive octamer which raises blood pressure, causing the heart to work harder. Likewise, this hormone is known to be present in high concentrations for those with various cardiovascular diseases. Blocking of this angiotensin converting pathway stops the constriction of blood vessels, lowers blood pressure, and the workload of the heart. This is ACE inhibitor's primary function. However, to understand how they function, we must first understand the target, angiotensin converting enzymes. By narrowing the focus to the target of these drugs, the angiotensin converting enzyme, we see here a ribbon diagram of the native structure of the angiotensin converting enzyme, meaning this is how it would be found floating in the cell without any ligand bound to it. Now we see here a depiction of the angiotensin converting enzyme complex to its naturally occurring ligand angiotensin. And this particular angiotensin is the enzymatic product angiotensin 2. Focusing further into the active site of the angiotensin converting enzyme, you can see here a proposed active site interaction. This representation of the active site of angiotensin converting enzymes depicts how angiotensin 1 complexes with angiotensin converting enzymes to form angiotensin 2. This complex is thought to occur by the help of a zinc ion in the cell. The zinc ions form an electrostatic interaction with the carbonyl oxygen of angiotensin 1. The zinc then binds to the angiotensin converting enzyme, bringing the complex angiotensin 1 along with it. The angiotensin then binds in one of two ways to the angiotensin converting enzyme. One of those ways is the bulky hydrophobic R groups of the amino acid side chains that make up angiotensin, such as phenylalanine, bind to the hydrophobic pockets of the angiotensin converting enzyme. Other binding interactions that take place are with the oxygen of the carboxylic acid that is not forming a carbonyl, binds to a positively charged area of the angiotensin converting enzyme, forming electrostatic interactions in hydrogen bonds with presumably an amine group on the angiotensin converting enzyme. This leads to the release of histidine and leucine from angiotensin 1 to form angiotensin 2. Finishing our discussion of the angiotensin converting enzyme's active site, you can see on this slide a ribbon diagram of the angiotensin converting enzyme's active site with the angiotensin converting enzyme in blue and the angiotensin 2 in red with a purple sphere of zinc, which is the zinc ion that helps with the binding of angiotensin 1 to the angiotensin converting enzymes active site.
1956, researchers discovered the enzyme responsible for converting angiotensin I to angiotensin II. John Vane, who was a consultant at the Squibb Institute for Medical Research, suggested studying this angiotensin-converting enzyme and its potential inhibitors. And David Cushman and Miguel Andetti, who are two enzymologists also working at ER Squibb and Sons, eventually decided to undertake this research. Unfortunately, the angiotensin-converting enzyme was poorly understood at this point in time for many reasons. Primarily, the scientific community did not yet agree upon its effect on blood pressure regulation. However, Cushman and Andetti did know that this angiotensin-converting enzyme was very similar to an enzyme that was better understood at the time, carboxypeptidase A. These enzymes were similar for many reasons, such as that both were inhibited by EDTA and reacted similarly in the presence of manganese, cobalt, and zinc ions. A significant breakthrough was made in 1968 when Sergio Ferreira, who was working with John Vane, showed that the venom of a Brazilian viper contained peptides that increased the activity of bradykinin, which was a known vasodilator, and also peptides that inhibited ACE. Eventually, Cushman and Ndeti found that both groups of peptides isolated from the venom inhibited ACE, and this resulted in the discovery of tepratide, shown here at the top right, which was chosen for study because it had the most ideal duration of activity in vivo. And in the early 1970s, tepratide became the first ACE inhibitor to undergo clinical trials for patients with hypertension. The only problem with tepratide is that it displayed very poor oral activity for two reasons. First, due to its large molecular size, and second, because it contained several peptide bonds, which made it unstable. In 1974, Cushman and Ondetti saw that the benzyl succinic acid had been found to be a strong inhibitor of carboxypeptidase A, and they agreed that the succinyl carboxyl group on this molecule was most likely binding to the zinc ion in the active site of the enzyme. From here, they hypothesized that a succinyl amino acid derivative could potentially inhibit ACE. Succinyl L-proline showed inhibitory effects on angiotensin I without having effects on angiotensin II and was observed to be orally active in rats. Cisinol L-proline also presented four different interactions with the active site of ACE. One, the carboxylate ions interact with the positive charges in the active site. Two, the pyridine ring fit into the enzyme subsite. Three, the methyl group fit into the enzyme subsite. And four, the carbonyl interacted with the hydrogen bond donors of the enzyme. The amino acids in the original sequence of the nonapeptide tepratide were tested, but none of them were inhibitory against angiotensin I and bradykinin. Therefore, the succinyl amino derivative was proposed to be an ACE inhibitor, and succinyl L-proline was found to be such an inhibitor. Moving forward, the addition of the 2-methyl substituent with deconfiguration was found to enhance inhibitory potency by about 15 times that of succinyl L-proline. Later, it was found that replacing the carboxyl group with the sulfihydryl function had greater affinity for the enzyme-bound zinc ion and was 1,000 times more potent than succinyl L-proline. Thus, d 3 mercapto 2 methylpropanoyl L-proline, also known as captopril, was created as the first orally active ACE inhibitor. Scientists soon realized adverse effects of skin rash and loss of taste were caused by the mercapto group of the captopril compound. So researchers wanted to find an ACE inhibitor without the mercapto group that would still bind to the zinc in the active site of the enzyme. They also wanted to find a compound with a higher volume of distribution and a longer half-life. Researchers could not use the exact structure of N-carboxymethyl dipeptide because peptides are readily blocked by cells upon entering the body. Thus, they looked for a peptidomimetic compound that would be able to attach to the active site. New potent tripeptide analogs with zinc-coordinating carboxyl groups were identified, which, which are called enalapril and lisinopril, that both have the addition of a benzene ring. This benzene ring allows for the binding of the compound in the hydrophobic pocket of the active site, of ACE. Enalapril is the prodrug for enalaprilat. So when enalapril is orally taken, the body metabolizes it into the active form enalaprilat by hydrolyzing the ester, forming a carboxylic acid. This compound can then bind to the zinc cation in the active site. Enalaprilat has a longer half-life than captopril, due to an increase in volume and distribution from 0.75 liters per kilogram for captopril to 10 liters per kilogram for enalaprilat.
The lysine analog of enalapril resulted in an increase in the half-life of the drug by an hour from that of enalapril. Lisinopril also saw a large increase in potency. An important property of lisinopril that differs from enalapril is that it does not require a prodrug, meaning it does not have to be metabolized by the body to bind to the active site of ACE. This is beneficial for patients with decreased hepatic function. Researchers added a phosphate group to the compound which resulted in the drug compound named fasinopril. Fasinopril, as the prodrug of fasinoprilat, is hydrolyzed by esterases to form the active drug compound. The addition of the phosphate group with the hydrophobic side chain slightly decreased potency but still competitively bound to the active site of ACE, preventing ACE from binding to and converting angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. The half-life and clearance of fasinopril is similar to lisinopril, but the volume of distribution increased and clearance decreased. Although enalapril and fasinopril are both effectively inhibited ACE and reduced blood pressure, fasinopril caused a greater inhibition of ACE and was consistently more effective than enalapril in reducing blood pressure. Although there are many different variations of ACE inhibitors, the ones that were discussed are important in exhibiting the developmental sequence of the drugs. Each new finding, including the addition of a mercapto group, the addition of a benzene ring, and the addition of a phosphate group, have all proved beneficial in the enhancement of the ACE inhibitors. Two other important ACE inhibitors are ramipril and quinipril, but they are similar to the potency and half-life of captopril and are therefore not as effective as enalapril, lisinopril, and fosinopril.